Hey traders, welcome back on the Pursuit of Wealth for another daily market recap. Today is Monday, December 14th, and in today's video, we're going to discuss some news and events and what we can expect for this week. And we're also going to talk about whether or not the S&P 500 has started its daily bounce. And we had a potential blow off top today on MindMed, so a psychedelic play, which we'll review some charts on that as well in just a few moments. But before we jump into today's content, make sure to smash the like, I'd appreciate it and consider subscribing to the channel. So we'll go over some news and events first here on the list. So we have the Electoral College voting to cement Joe Biden's victory over Trump. And I tuned into that. I watched uh, the, the majority of it. So pretty much for the most part across the board, they're all voting Joe Biden. So it looks like Trump's time is running out and it's going to be official. The inauguration is going to be on the 20th of January, so we're about a month away. And we also have the Senate runoffs coming up on the first week of January, on the January 5th. Trump's efforts to fight election results should stop after Monday, Senator Lamar Alexander says. We also saw that fears of violence were growing amid threats to election officials. Apparently there was death threats and just about everything but the kitchen sink thrown at them. A bipartisan group to release a relief bill as Congress faces pressures to send help. We also saw that Trump, Fauci, and Pfizer CEO all willing to take the cure. Uh, you know, they have no concerns about that. They have, uh, they'd be glad to take it. And I don't know, personally, I wouldn't be lining up anytime soon. Let me know in the comments below if, if there was a vaccine offered to you, would you take it? And Pfizer's Vaccine is now shipping. Here's how the U.S. plans to deliver it. So you can check that out if you want to know, know a little bit more on that subject. We also saw that the first shipments arrived in Canada and more are en route. Russian hackers also suspected of spying on the U.S. government, including Treasury and Commerce Departments. So a little, little frightening, I guess you could say there, but we'll see. We'll monitor if there's any. I, I don't think this would have been related. Um, Google services, including Gmail, YouTube, suffer major outage. I also saw that uh, an article going around that Google goes down, but Bitcoin stays up. I found that pretty funny. So a couple people covering Airbnb are saying, some analysts saying that the stock should be sold if you're holding it, that it's likely going to be in reversal mode after it jumped too high. And again, I mentioned that last week that it ran way too hot for me. I wouldn't be touching it with a 10 foot pole. And then today it was down, I think double digits. So we'll look at that here as well in just a moment. MindMen announces successful completion of its pre IMD meeting with the FDA for Project Lucy. So probably why it was up today, some more positive information here about their clinical trials. So you can read that in its entirety if you wanna learn more, if you are interested in MindMed, ticker MMED. We also had Hexo reporting their financials today. I did a video on this earlier on today, and I also did a product review video on their Very Well Strawberry Hibiscus drink as well. It's phenomenal. So if you're interested in learning more about that, I would check out the video from my channel earlier this morning about the, pro about the product review and the financials, which we went over in detail. So Taking a look at the results here, so you can see that we were expecting negative 0.0207, came in at 0.01, so about a surprise beat there of about 50. And revenue 29.41 million versus the estimated 28.68 million. So a beat there on both fronts. So congrats to the Hexo Bulls. We were seeing the price manipulated a little bit today, and they're just trying to pin it as much as they can. MJ was also consolidating. We had 30 minute bear flags on most names, including canopy growth, but essentially just consolidating, looking for daily higher lows in the Canadian MJ space. And I think that's why Hexo was sold off at the open gap ups are for selling. So we had profit taking. And I think a lot of people also expected it to be good and positive earnings. So again, uh, with SPY weakness and MJ as a whole pulling back, it's not so totally surprising that and a lot of the moves for Hexo have been happening after hours. So until that pattern changes, that's what we should expect. So taking a look here at SPY, we did get the daily bounce underway. And as the title of the video suggests, 
is the bounce really underway? And I would say no, because we did break the high of the previous daily candle, which you know we saw a gap up, so we knew to be looking for a potential daily bounce play. But then we rejected and started to pull back. And the clue that this wasn't going to be heading up to the recent highs anytime soon was that we didn't change the hourly trend. So you can see here off the low of 363.27 from last week, we needed to change the hourly trend. And I said, if we gap up, generally those are gonna be for selling because we know we'll be extended on the hourly. We were approaching overbought and we hadn't had an hourly higher low since 363.27. So exactly what happened this morning, gap up was for selling and then just profit taking all day long and lower high every candle essentially all day long from the open. So just looking for that hourly higher low compared to 363.27, the resistance to break will be 369.79. If we break 369.79 tomorrow, it's possible that we have a, an inside bar, but we'll monitor that resistance tomorrow. If we break above that, then that's going to be an hourly trend change and the daily higher low likely being set. And then at that point, we can consider the daily bounce underway. So QQQ, same deal, didn't change the hourly trend. So we're going to need to do that as step number one, holding the EMAs, so holding up relatively well, still a possible hourly bull flag at this point. And we'll just take a quick look at the dollar. So the dollar, basically same deal, low, high, looking for an hourly higher low here finding resistance at the EMAs. We did briefly lose it, EMA 12 as support, but still very weak. We, were, we knew to just be looking for potential daily bear flags on the dollar and all about support at 90.47. If we lose 90.47, we got as low as 90.42 today. So we didn't see the follow through. So as long as we hold that 90.42 level, we're going to potentially negate the daily bear flag, but at this point it is still in play. So taking a look at the Dow, did we change the hourly trend? No, we did not. And just an absolute massive reversal there from the high of the day, nasty, nasty. IWM, same deal, needs to change the hourly trend. So going into tomorrow, it's going to be all about the hourly trends and breaking this these resistances from the low and then straight into a, you know, giving the whole move back. That is a definitely a definite red flag in my opinion. SMH holding up relatively well, all things considered up over 1% today, low, high, high or low. We did break resistance here uh, of 215.67. We broke it just barely, but we closed below it. So looking to form another potential higher low here off of EMA 12 support. So we're gonna look, could be a potential hourly bull flag as well. So again, going into tomorrow, we need to see follow through from those levels to be confident that the daily higher lows are set and that the daily bounce is underway. Oil saw about a 1% gain today. Gold and silver pulling back. I mentioned this in my video last week. I said to be on watch for this red line here, which was the weekly descending triangle resistance, downward sloping resistance line. That's exactly where we topped out. I said, just expecting weekly lower highs. And that's exactly what, what happened. We have inside bars on watch here at the moment. Looks like gold did break the weekly inside bear bearish. So it looks like weekly high, lower highs are set on gold. Not yet on silver. Silver holding up a little bit better. But you can see here we have the low, high, higher low, higher high. We broke that. We lost the low. So we essentially lost the daily uptrend on gold but we didn't have much follow through we're going to need to see follow through to be convinced but at this point it could still be a weekly bear flag and lower highs forming at this point we also have ema 12 potentially looking to cross bearish through ema 26 if that would occur and we lose the low here of 1764 that would be a low a lower high and a lower low that would be a confirmed weekly downtrend and if we had that ema bear cross we could easily bring us down to 1670, which is the last weekly support level. And if we take the measured move here out of this descending triangle bear break, the exact measure move brings us down here to the 1670 area. So a lot of confluence and potential for clues lining up. If we do confirm weekly downtrends, that's where I'd be looking to buy gold is on that 1670 support test, weekly support level. 
So that's where we stand. Taking a look at XBI. XBI was a monster today. So clear standing out as the clear lead bull, but had a nasty upper wick there into the end of the day. Did we change the hourly trend? Low, high, high or low? Yes, we did. We, were, we have lots of support here on the hourly. Now just looking to form another higher low here compared to 140.56. Most important resistance will be 149.92 going into tomorrow. XHB, Home Builders ETF. Looks like it wasn't an hourly uptrend, but just looking for an hourly higher low now compared to 56.31 and resistance up at 57.42. XLE, so bears in full control of the energy sector. Again, we needed to see those hourly trend changes, but clearly not what the bulls wanted to see. We had that inside bar, uh, essentially that broke bull, and then we came back down to test EMA 12 on the daily time frame. So we'll see if we can bounce there. But again, we're going to need to change the hourly trend back in favor of the bulls. And any bounce that we do get on the hourly will just be anticipating hourly lower highs based on the size of this pullback. XLF down over 1% today. Again, very, very weak. Need to change that hourly trend back to the bulls. XLRE, the real estate sector. Again, need to change that hourly trend. So 3587, most important support. 3679 is going to be the resistance to break to confirm an hourly uptrend. XLV, nasty puke as well. Close below support. Wouldn't be surprised if we saw a gap down tomorrow in SPY. And that's a potential gap down that I'd be looking to buy. So that's where we stand on the broader market. Just taking a quick check in here to Bitcoin. So I know a lot of people in the group were asking, was Bitcoin breaking out here? And the answer is no. We were just anticipating daily once we broke out of this equilibrium here, bear, we were just anticipating a lower high as a result here on the daily. So you can see here that we have a daily inside bar on watch, about two hours and 10 minutes left in the day, uh, the daily candle, but we're gonna be watching this inside bar. If we break bull, then we'll be looking up to resistance and all time highs. And if we break bear, then we'll be looking down here at support, which is 17,580. So, Again, just anticipating daily lower highs, whichever way we break out of this daily inside bar is going to give us direction, whether or not the daily bounce is still going to continue or if we can anticipate daily consolidation and look for a higher low compared to that 17,580. So that's where we stand on Bitcoin. Just taking a look here. So Airbnb and Dash were down quite a bit today. And we'll take a look at the MindMed chart here as well in just a second. but. You can see that Dash was down. Let's take a look at the notable losers. So Space was down almost 20%, over 17%. Dash down 8.5 at the close. And Airbnb did rebound here, down a little over 6%. But it was they were both down over double digits at one point on the day. And again, we were trending lower. We had a lower high and a lower low each every single day since it started trading. And when something doubles of its IPO price, um, personally, that's you know a rule of thumb of mine is I just I don't play that until there's clear support and resistance levels established. And here's an example of why: because if you would have entered anywhere up here around the 150s, you would have been down 15 to 20 percent in a matter of days, right? So you need to be mindful of FOMO to check in with yourself. Are you entering because of FOMO? Are you entering because it's a decent trade? Are you letting the trade come to you? Do you have a stop level? Are you using support and resistance? All things you need to ask yourself before joining a trade. Same with Dash, last three days, lower highs and lower lows. So need to change the hourly trend to be confident that the daily bounce can, we can look for a daily bounce. We do have increasing bull volume here on Dash in the end of the day. So that's, that's promising. A, B and B had decreasing bull volume and could still be potential hourly bear flag at this point. Pretty much the same on Dash as well. So again, need to change those hourly trends back to the bulls. What else do we have on the bull, on the bull list today? INSG, monster move. I remember seeing this at $8 about a week ago, a couple weeks ago, but 100% move. So congrats to the bulls there. We have Riot up over 5%. Tesla closed at 639, up almost 5%. DDD also seeing some catching a bid today. 
seeing some nice momentum. So that's pretty much where we stand in terms of individual tickers. So we'll do a quick MJ review, sector review, and then we'll look at the mind med chart. So Canadian MJ again today, we had 30 minute bear flags on watch and EMA 12 acting as a brick wall. We have been struggling with it ever since here, since we lost it here as support back at that uh, top of the recent top that we had. But essentially, essentially since we lost that, we haven't closed over this these EMAs on the 30 minutes. So that's a nice visual guide to be watching. And based on the close of the candle and the ramping sell volume, I wouldn't be surprised we closed underneath of support as well. Wouldn't be surprised if we saw a gap down and some follow through on that bear flag into tomorrow. So again, daily consolidation still underway, a daily lower high, every candle for the last, we had a little bit of a Bear, a bull break here, but essentially a fake out. So for the last six days, we've had a lower high and we could see a potential bear cross of EMA 12 through 26. And we need to change those hourly trends back to the bulls, but just looking for a daily lower high at this point compared to 2342. So again, all about the hourly chart. Need absolute step number one, need to have changed the hourly trend back to the bulls. And that's gonna be the case for most names. Hexo, you can see here it had a low, high, higher, low, higher, high in an hourly uptrend. So it looks like the daily lower, or higher low is set on Hexo. And we did have this support line here that we've essentially closed right on as well. And we're up about one penny here after hours, but just looking for an hourly higher low. And we'll look to the five minute chart as well. Once we confirm a five minute uptrend, then we can be confident that the hourly higher low is set. And we'll look to break the high of the previous hourly candle to be confident that the hourly bounce is underway. But we never did get, we never did actually touch down rate on hourly oversold. We take off extended hours. We never did get to hourly oversold from that huge run up to $1.32. So we'll see. I personally think they're manipulating this. They're trying to keep it as low as they can for as long as they can, but they don't really want it to dip below a dollar US or, or especially a dollar Canadian. I know a lot of people that are looking to buy this at a dollar Canadian or, or below. And personally, what I think they're doing is they're just trying to manipulate it. They're trying to keep it around a dollar US and they're trying to accumulate their position as much as they can, keep it as low as they can for as long as they can. And then potentially we'll see a huge move after hours like we've been seeing. And then those people that were going to buy with limit orders around a dollar Canadian or under a dollar, US, um, you know, maybe they never get their, their orders filled and then they're forced to buy later on. That's what I could see happening. And I could see a potential news article come out or something like that, that would squeeze some shorts and catch people a little off guard, but essentially going to be watching the same on most names, 30 minute bear flags, same with APHA and Cron. So that's pretty much where we stand. Oxley was down 10% today, so leading the decline. NSP up 18%, PWR up almost 10%, huge up over 7%. Sundial up over 1% today as well. So that's where we stand in terms of Canadian MJ. In US MJ, we had Ian down almost 15%, NBEV almost 10%, down 8%. Um, we had BioHarvest up 18% today. So with that, I'm gonna actually chart this MindMed F chart here. So there should be more volume, but huge, huge volume on MindMed today. But IIPR seeing a nice uh, gain today as well. CXXI coming out with earnings, I think on Wednesday, but uh, not a whole, whole lot going on in the US MJ either today. So clearly, just waiting for direction. There was, like I said, the vote about the electoral college for Joe Biden. So we could see some potential narrative and positive momentum trending in because of that. So we'll keep an eye out for that. And like I said, we have the Senate runoff coming up on the first week of January as well. So let's take a look at the mind med chart. So daily doji indecision candle here to close. We do have increasing bull volume, but we're extremely overbought with RSI on the daily at 92.86. So certainly wouldn't be recommending any entries up at these levels. 
you are in a bullish position, we could be potentially seeing a volume climax. Um, obviously, five minute oversold was money today. So you can see we dropped down to 364. We got very extreme. We're down in the, the 13s here at one point on the RSI. And from that five minute oversold, 24% bounce. So again, huge, huge move there. You don't need to be entering at resistance or you know at all time highs. There's plenty of trades to be had and a five minute oversold bounce like this one with 20 to 25% upside in a matter of 30 to 40 minutes is an example that you do not need to chase and, and buy resistance breaks or buy tops. So it does look like we have a blow off top here we are outside of the monthly Bollinger Bands as well. Let's just take a look at the monthly chart. We, do, we have a monthly higher low essentially since August. And we don't have earnings coming up until April. On the weekly chart, we are in a weekly uptrend with that test of EMA 12 here back on, in November. So we are in a weekly uptrend. We're in a daily uptrend. But again, no daily high or low from all the way down here at $1.49. So we could drop, we could drop 60, between 60 and 70% and still be in a daily uptrend. So personally, I would be, now that five minute oversold has come and gone, I'd be waiting for hourly oversold conditions before even considering uh, you know, a position here in this name. But obviously, if you see a pattern like a head and shoulders and you want to you know, enter or if you want to sell or rebuy cheaper, or if you see an inverse head and shoulders and you want to buy uh, for a quick, you know, day trade, that's one thing. But to be holding this, you know, making a long entry right now is just not a good idea in my opinion. I at least want to see hourly oversold or a daily high or low. And that could potentially happen tomorrow. We could potentially open with a daily inside bar tomorrow as well. Um, we'll keep an eye out for the consolidation if we only see a little bit of a pullback. And uh, consolidation, if we do see an inside bar and a bear break, uh, we'll keep an eye out for a daily bear uh, bull flag. And like I said, just looking for, we could drop 60, 70% and still be looking for a daily high or low in a uh, daily uptrend. So that's where we stand. Just looking for an hourly high or low. Did, we did hold EMA 12 there into the end of the day. Just taking a look at the five minute. No real red flags on the five minute, but definitely looks like the tops are in for now. And a lot of hype and euphoria today in the psychedelic space trip up 80%, PLNT up 58%, NUMI up 51%, RBB up 50%. So LOBE 27%. So clearly this is the new hype space and hype has returned to the psychedelic building. RVV daily uptrend, huge monster move. 300% in less than a month. Absolutely insane. Congrats to the Bulls. Personally, I don't have any shroom plays. I did get quite a bit of, bounce, uh, quite a bit of uh, gains from the last bounce that we had and the last round of hype, but essentially just looking to play some five minute oversold, hourly oversold, that type of thing, just for a quick day trade at this point. But obviously bulls in full control of the psychedelic space. And taking a look at the weekly time frame over here for Med, Mind Med, we are above the 10 week moving average. The stochastic is still cross bullish and the MACD is absolutely taking off to the moon. Taking a look at the moving averages on the weekly, we do have the 50, down at 61 cents, the 50 weekly moving average. And we do have the 100 crossing through the 200 weekly moving average, but essentially a long ways down. And taking a look at the daily moving average is the same thing, way down at $1.30 on the 50 day moving average. So this is why we don't recommend any entries at these levels. Blue sky breakouts, you don't wanna be fighting the bulls either, but look at this, I mean, we're, we're overextended on the daily, we know this. So when we do pull back, wouldn't be surprised if we pull back 10, 20, 30, even 40% from these levels and just in search for a daily high or low here compared to $1.50. So that's where we stand. Just taking a look here 
as we wrap up to see if there's anything else. So we are still eyeing stimulus. Apparently, we're expecting between 500 and 900 billion in stimulus in this round of funding. So we'll see if there's any updates there. We also have Wednesday FOMC meeting and statement. So we'll see if there's any changes in, in monetary policy. And on Thursday, we have the initial jobless claims, which has been trending down for the last couple of weeks, came in with a huge miss last week. So we'll continue to want monitor that trend to see if it continues to the downside. And Friday, we also have monthly options expiry. So that will be top on the list as well. So that's pretty much all I have for you guys today. Thanks again for joining us on the Pursuit of Wealth for another daily market recap. Let me know in the comments below if you need any help or any tickers that you'd like covered and consider joining us for a one week free trial. We're actually extending the free trials out to the end of the month and we're going to do the trials for the entire month. So if you sign up today for no credit card required for the free trial, you'll have until the end of the month. So it'll essentially be a two and a half week trial, uh, no credit card required. So thanks again for joining us for another daily market recap and we'll see you tomorrow after the close.